this is an element of the biodiversity informatics training curriculum that's aimed at uh, giving you some guidance on preparing effective proposals for funding. This is actually very little to do with biodiversity informatics or, or science at all. It's simply how do you get enough funding in the door to be able to do the science that you want to do. So like it or not, we have to deal with, with uh, proposals and, and requesting funding from the institution. I'm going to try to keep this uh, module quite general so that it's applicable to many different uh, types of proposals and types of funding. But essentially, you can think of three broad categories. Uh, in some cases, we have fellowships and scholarships. So this is essentially proposals that request uh, funding to support studies for an individual. Uh, in many cases, we're talking about research support. So this is funding to support a particular study. And finally, and biggest in scale, is institutional support. So this is essentially funding to support a, um, a broad group or an institution. Uh, and it will oftentimes serve as, a, as an umbrella for many different uh, projects. So you can kind of think of those three types of, of proposals in general. Your funding sources are going to be varied as well. Um, just to give you the spectrum and some examples, uh, in many cases you'll be looking to some national source, uh, a national science foundation of whichever country you're located in. There are international sources. For example, very specific to biodiversity, um, there are some funding opportunities from the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. And many of you will have access to international aid agencies as well. And then finally, we have private foundations. I give two examples again. Uh, the JRS Biodiversity Foundation is actually the, the foundation that's funding this project, uh, developing this curriculum. And then on a, on a different front, the MacArthur Foundation, which funds quite a bit of, of work in, in conservation uh, worldwide. This list is not exhaustive. It's intended just to get you thinking on different scales of funding uh, and scopes of funding. And the examples I've given are only that. They're examples, and there are many more sources that could be identified. So now I'm going to give you a series of suggestions. First, how to prepare for your proposal, and then how to assemble your proposal. Uh, a very important first step is to find and read very, very carefully the request for proposals or call for, for proposals or whatever, whatever it's called, uh, something that states the exact dimensions of the program to which you're applying. So you need to seek the primary original official announcement and avoid things that interpret or, or uh, compact this information for you. You need to read it multiple times very carefully. If you don't, you stand quite a risk of simply wasting your own time uh, because you will, you will uh, find yourself eliminated from competition because you missed some element of the proposal or you asked for something that that institution is not willing to fund. Uh, essentially, don't try to fit a round peg in a square hole. Uh, if they say, we're really looking for X, don't try to sell them Y, because you will usually not be successful. On that note, uh, if you have questions at the end of the re request for proposal read, uh, don't be afraid to email or phone the, the uh, official in charge of the program. It's okay to ask do you really want this, or how do I do that? That can be very useful in, again, avoiding those mistakes that basically just waste your time. 
So here's a list of kind of key details that you need to look for in the request for proposals. Who is eligible to apply? What format should the proposal take? How long is the text? Is it pages? Is it words? What's, what's the limit on how long you can send something? Uh, what is the duration of the project? Is it a, is it a one year uh, funding or can it go five years? Uh, what are the budget dimensions, which is to say what, what elements can be included in the budget? For example, are, are studentships uh, able to be included? Are salaries, can, can equipment be purchased? All sorts of details like that. And perhaps most important, what are the deadlines? When do you have to be ready uh, to turn in your proposal? So I'm going to give you some examples. And these are basically just uh, funding sources and their request for proposals uh, and essentially how they work. These are, this is not intended as a guide to you for these programs. Rather, it's just what to look for. So here's the MacArthur Foundation, uh, which frequently uh, is looking for proposals from across the tropical world. Uh, and they have a very interactive website. You learn about what we fund. And they say we, they make grants in a number of fields. Uh, they developed a, a, a rather peculiar um, set of cycles, which I think we're going to see more of in a moment. Um, you can see they, ha they have current calls for proposals on how housing matters, but then accepting inquiries, they have this conservation and sustainable development. That's the category that most biodiversity related uh, projects are funded under with the MacArthur Foundation. So what MacArthur does is they have a, a rolling set of geographic foci. So at this moment, the geographical focus is on three regions, the Great White Lakes of East Central Africa, the Greater Mekong in Southeast Asia, and the watersheds of the Andes. Uh, again, I'm not giving you a guide to MacArthur funding, I'm just helping you to look for these key details. They say they'll focus on four issues, which is to say they're particularly interested in climate change mitigation and adaptation, uh, environmental and so social considerations in commodities markets, and, and over-exploitation and illegal use of marine fisheries. So again, the idea is learn to look for these details. If you come in to this program with something that's focused on, say, uh, deforestation, this funding agency may not be so interested in that if it doesn't fit within these categories. So more on MacArthur Foundation. This is just a clip from their, their web page. Uh, three year recurring cycle. Uh, letters of inquiry submitted by the below deadlines. And then you come down here and you see that the deadlines for three of the regions are by invitation only. But for the Great Lakes of Africa, uh, April 5th, 2013. And so essentially these are the, the, the details that we need to seek out so that we're certain that we understand how this particular program works. Even farther in, here's their Conservation and Sustainable Development Program, and they name some areas where they're working. Uh, notice that it's not just the regions that I just listed, but also the Caribbean, Madagascar, Melanesia. Uh, but again, you need, to, you need to read the details and make sure you understand them. Let's go to a very, very different funding agency now. This is the U.S. National Science Foundation. Um, these are often big grants. And again, maybe you won't be using National Science Foundation funding. I just want to give you the example of the request for proposals. So these are very carefully uh, formatted. You can see this is the newest solicitation that replaces an old one. We have our deadlines. Um, the 2013 deadline is April 1st. And then after that, the first Monday of April, it tells you the changes that have been made for proposals to this program. 
Uh, it goes into details. For example, a data management plan has to be provided. Again, I'm just trying to give you the idea of looking at these details and not missing something that's required. Award information. Here we get to the budget for these same grants. They plan to give 10 to 15 grants and a total amount of 15 to 20 million dollars pending availability of funds. So they don't have to give that amount of money, but they may. Uh, the awards will be, this first category, the awards will be one to two years in duration, but in the secondary, second category, the awards can go up to five years in duration. So essentially, those are, those are those details that you should be looking for. Eligibility information, essentially who can apply. Universities, uh, nonprofits, independent museums, but again, you want to make sure that you're on that list. Don't fit a square peg in a round hole because it'll end up wasting your time. Here's a very, very different opportunity. Uh, this is a small funding opportunity at the University of Kansas where I work. And this is, this is an opportunity essentially for seed grants. And again, we need to scan through here research endeavors that bring together the sciences, arts, and humanities. So you better be thinking about how to cross those boundaries. Uh, outcome of a seed grant should be development and submission of a substantive research grant proposal. So you're going to need to tell about your plans uh, to generate that sort of proposal. Again, read all these details. Here's more information. Up to $45,000 available for one or more awards. So right there, you can see a strategy decision. You can ask for the $45,000, or you might ask for $15,000 and think that that way the agency can fund three grants. So you have to decide, and maybe you consult with the program officer, but you have to decide what's the best strategy. All the funds have to be spent by that date. So in your timeline, you have to make sure that that coincides with the end date. Um, and to be considered must include a pre-proposal and a full proposal. So these are these details. I'm not going to go into all the details, but, but notice project cover page, and it gives all the elements, the abstract, the description. Don't cruise by these things. These are important, and if you ignore them, the people who, who will be judging your proposal will get upset at you.